Welcome, welcome to Creativity in Focus, a live video podcast where we highlight an artist and its arts every single week. Now, here are a few unique things about this podcast. We are in many places, so wherever you're watching, you are going to see a, a chat box either beside or below the video. That's the best place for you to interact with us. Actually, we are live here for that very reason. So you can not only tell us about you, tell about what you create, but ask questions to the artists because what they do is so unique and you know they have their own process, their, their own way of living the life of an artist and you want to interact with them. So please do, show, do so using the chat box. Just look where it is in whatever device or, or platform that you're watching this. The other thing is share this video. You know, in many social media platforms like Facebook, if you don't interact, talk, put a heart, give a like, right at the beginning of the video, they don't show the video for other people. So take a second to do that right now, and we are really thankful for that for you. Today, my guest is a very special person and a good friend, Judy as Elsley. Is Elsley, that correct? That's correct. Okay. Yep. And you know, Judy, I don't want to introduce you. I want you to tell me first uh, how you like to be called as a surface designer. What's the best way to tell them who you um, are? I'm a textile artist. Okay. But I'm also a potter, so I think oh. I'm just um, an artist. That's cool, cool. Yeah. And that beautiful accent that you have? Uh, from England. Um, I was born and raised just north of London. Uh -huh. I moved to this country in 1979 and um, earned a PhD, taught at Weber State University in Ogden, Utah, taught English, appropriate Ooh. for an English woman, huh? <laughs> and retired two years ago. Okay. Yeah. And, and how long ago did you find out you were an artist? How that happened? I think it was um, through the when I started making quilts, which mm -hmm. was in the early 1980s. And at first I um, used commercial fabrics uh -huh. and uh, bought patterns and followed the patterns and gradually moved towards dyeing my own fabrics, which I do now. I never buy commercial fabrics. Oh, really? All, All your pieces are totally dyed? Everything is made by with fabric that I've dyed and printed on and discharged from. Um, and also doing my own designs. So mm -hmm. everything that we've got here today is my own hand dyes and my own designs. That's so good. Now, in your artistic career, uh, do, you, do you sell your creations? Have you put them in galleries? What's the pathway that you have followed? Um, as, um, because I was in academia, then um, I had to write uh, papers to get published. And so um, my PhD dissertation was about quilting, it was oh, about really? quilts, mm -hmm. um, as a way for women to express themselves when the, pe the, pen, the needle was more available than the pen. Uh -huh. um, and so um, I've made a living by getting tenure, if you like, by publishing papers. Mm -hmm. So I have never really sold my work for, um, for, for profit. Okay. Um, and I don't know how to set a price on it because it takes so much time mm -hmm. to make a quilt in the way that I do, where I'm starting with dyeing the fabric, then constructing it, and then often embellishing it. No one would be willing to pay the price. Yes, yes. But you have been in shows and in galleries, I correct? I have. I've been in uh, shows in mostly in Utah. Okay. Um, in Ogden, in Salt Lake City, uh, Brigham City, um, but also um, in other places, in Kansas, um, uh, occasionally in other states. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's so cool. Linda Williams is saying hi, and she gave us a heart. Thank you so much, Linda. And don't forget, this is an interactive interview, so ask your questions because mm -hmm. she'll be happy to answer. I will. Now, Judy, what attracted you to quilting? Because I know mm -hmm. you're involved with a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. You're the president mm -hmm. of the Utah Surface Design yeah. Group. What attracts you to quilting? Um, it's an obsession with textiles. Mm -hmm. I just love the feel of fabric. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm just always drawn to it. The same with clothes. I don't make clothes, but uh -huh. I like clothes and I buy clothes. Um, just anything to do with textiles. I just find that tactile nature it's good. is good. Yeah. You know, I, I learned to love text textiles because of the touch as well. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I was a teenager, I went uh, as an intern to my uncle and mm -hmm. he had a 
clothes store and yeah. in the back they had several seamstress there. Yeah. So I would go through the inventory and he would say, touch this and touch that. Yeah. Yeah. And he told me there is only way for you to understand fabric and how to buy right. fabric is if you feel, feel it. it. Yes. Which is yeah. interesting today because yeah. we many times have to go online, so that we, yeah. we lost that. Yeah. But yeah. I remember spending yeah. hours by myself in that. It was a dark place, actually, where yeah. he had all those fibers, and just touching each one, and yeah. it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah yes. I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Now, let's talk a little bit about your pieces so they can get to know exactly right. what you make. Which okay. one would you like to start well, with? Well, I'd like to start with some fabrics that I've made because they're often the starting point. My process is very much intuitive, uh -huh. So I either start with an idea of what I want to say or, um, in the quilt, or else I start with pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you a few pieces of fabric that I've made awesome. that would make um, interest. And is it all right if I stand of up? Of course, of course. Okay. Do it. All right. So um, I do a lot of shibori work, and um, your, your um, viewers will know that shibori is um, just a fancy way, the Japanese way of, of talking about tie-dye. So this is a piece of uh, shibori that um, has been very uh, regularly um, um, tied and, and then dyed, um, a piece that I haven't used yet. But I mm -hmm. look at it and I think, this would be good for something. I don't know quite what. <laughs> and then um, here's a piece that is dyed more loosely um, with two different colors. But it's also a beautiful piece. And again, I haven't used it yet. But why I'm showing it to you is because often the piece inspires me. So when I look at this piece, I think, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can't bear to cut them up. But, uh -huh. but often I do. And I think, what would I do with this piece? And I put it up on my, on my wall at home, my studio wall, and look at it and think about it. And an idea will come to me. So it's my own. Um, uh, hand-dyed fabrics that often inspire so, me. So how do you dye them? Is it acid dyeing? How, I'm, what no, um, acid dye would be for wools. Uh -huh. um, and what I'm using um, up until very recently is Procyon MX dyes. Okay. Um, they're chemical dyes. I've recently got into eco dyeing, and we'll talk about that uh -huh. a bit later. Mm -hmm. I'll show you two more pieces. This is um, batik. And again, the piece, is, and that's using wa a wax resist. So again, the piece is just... That's beautiful. Yeah. What will I do with it? I have no idea yet. <laughs> so I have stashes. Every quilter has a stash of commercial or of... Um, so, so the batik would, would allow you to, to give a more specific design to the piece. Yes, because where you've got the white is where the wax went. Okay, and so you control. And so you can control where the color goes because okay. there are edges here of uh -huh. wax that prevent the color from going to other places. That's fantastic. And this is one. I show you this because it's a little more complicated. This is um, something called improvisational um, printing. Mm. And each time you print a panel, it comes out slightly differently. I can um, open it up. And then what I've done is printed on top of it. So oh. here's this. Can you hold there a moment? I want to give a close up on that one. It's unbelievable. Oh, so the beautiful. piece, as you can see from left to right, it's the same design, but because it loses color each time I pull a print, it looks slightly different. It's harder to see on this one because I've covered it with an, the, circle, the circles which make a second design. Wow, that's gorgeous. So again, I, would, I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but mm -hmm. it's in my stash and one of these days I'll use it. How often do you dye? Um, I go through periods when um, all I want to do is dye. Uh -huh. D-Y-E, uh. yes. <laughs> yes. And my friends call me and they say, what are you doing? And I say, I'm dying in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> and they say, whoa, should I come right over? And I say, no, no, it's, it's D-Y-E. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so I go through periods where I do nothing but dyeing. And then I go through periods where I do nothing but sewing. I'm really doing that. Mm -hmm. And other periods where I'm doing my pottery. So I it just go from yeah. one activity to another. The last piece I'm going to show you mm -hmm. just from these fabrics um, is sort of the Jackson Pollock approach. So this is um, fabric that I originally dyed green. So it was a green fabric, and then I put it on the ground, and I had bottles of different colors, uh -huh. and I just do the Jackson Pollock thing. <laughs> yeah. 
So again, I have no idea what I will use this for, but the fabrics themselves are sort of inspirational because mm -hmm. they're just so interesting. And they're, they're a bit like children <laughs> that they don't quite come, turn out the way you expect them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now tell me one thing, you, you start dyeing and you, you, you don't know what you're going to be using for. So do you have a, a rule, I'm going to dye one yard or three yards? Or? Um, very often it's either one or three yards. Between if one If you're three. making a, a, a piece that's going to be a dyed piece that is not going to be used but just shown as a dyed mm -hmm. piece, and many dyers do that, you make a three yard long piece. That's okay. just the standard the size. Standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, um, I will just take a piece that whatever size I don't. You have. I have. So okay. you're just seeing samples of mm -hmm. different sizes. I, is there one specific type of fabric that you like more when you're dyeing? Yes, I use cotton a lot, 100% cotton. Um, when you're dyeing, when I'm dyeing, I have to use 100% cotton. It, there can't be polyester in it. Okay. Polyester won't take a dye, mm. but cotton will. And the reason I use cotton is because I'm making quilts and it's an easy fabric to use. Okay. Uh -huh. I could use linen would do the same thing. Um, a few, um, I also dye silk. Silk's the best thing to, to dye because silk loves dyes. Oh. It just laps up dye. <laughs> and I make... Give me uh, some color. Give yeah, me some exactly, color. exactly. And the color, the same color will come out. You put a piece of cotton and a piece of silk into the same dye vat and they will come out different colors because oh. of the quality of, because it's two different fabrics. The silk will take a lot more? Mm -hmm. It will, it's a richer color. And I dye silk scarves. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, we have here Linda, she's saying, ooh, let me find it. Uh, Linda Williamson, I take my grandchildren to the fabric store and we touch all the fabric. Yeah. It makes their moms crazy, but you have to feel the fabric. Your fabric is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And um, she's quite right that that's the pleasure of, of going to fabric stores, yes. feeling those yes. fabrics. I, yeah. I just hope they were more around yes. like before than yeah. they are now. Yeah. Now let's talk about the natural world then. Okay. All right. And th this is your latest passion. It is. So okay. um, we're jumping ahead here. And um, I went to a class given by Jane Dunwald, and she's a rock star in my world. <laughs> um, I learned to dye from her many years ago. Um, and what we were doing was dyeing on fabric. And these, um, I came home and did more. These, are, this is um, a, um, a Japanese maple mm -hmm. and also um, ladies mantle from my own yard, from oh, my garden. Really? Yeah, so this is printed on cotton, but I also print on paper. So this is printed on paper. Wow. And, um, oh, yeah. Can I touch it? Please, yeah. Uh -huh. and and it's, it's like a watercolor paper. It is, it's a very good quality paper and then I mount it on mat. Nice. Um, and these I do sell, um, but this, these are, um, it, it was a whole new process for me learning how to do this. Uh -huh. And I also did, have begun doing collages wow. of um, the papers that I um, that I'm dying with the, with a botanical print. So I'm using actual flat, actual leaves and actual um, uh, 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 plants mm -hmm. to dye these. And then um, I've also been learning how to use plant dyes um, like madder or cochineal. They tend to give you a red color. Um, to, to uh, dye fabric and you I get these. I love this one. Yeah, you get, I haven't finished this one. It's not, uh, it's not yet quilted. Uh -huh. um, but this is all with using plant-based dyes. All of them. So yes. I would assume this is cochinilla? Yes, it is. Okay. And this is more with madder or logger wood. Um, and I can't remember what this one is, but then you can put them all together. This is sort of, I also like to embellish mm -hmm. and do a lot of stitching. And so um, this is one where I've um, printed the, the, the leaf and then I've used the, the dyed, plant dyed fabrics around it and then, and then I've, um, wow. I've, I've stitched on it. And you can see that it's not finished yet, that it's, mm -hmm. things are still in process. Yes. A lot of my work is, I'm always in process with things. <laughs> yeah. how, many, how many projects do, do you tend to work at the same time? Um, 
I have maybe four or five that are always on my um, studio wall that I look at. And one of the reasons that they're, they're in process is because I often reach a point where I don't know what the next step is. Oh. For example, I don't know what the next step is with this. It's, it's a nice piece and it will, um, there's more of it at home. It's quite a big piece. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what, it's, what it wants to do. It has to speak to me. But then let me understand one thing. You, yeah. you, you had a process in your mind because you started the design. I do, right? uh, yes. So, so I knew I wanted to put different colors in these colors to sort of bring them out, to okay. show them off. And then I knew I wanted to counteract that square with a circle. Uh -huh. And that's as far as I've got. So I will put it up on my studio wall and in about three months time, I'll go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing will come to me, and it might be something in here, or, okay. you know, I don't know yet. It is gorgeous the way it is. The colors are nice. I mean, they're different from doing, the say, the Procyon colors. Mm -hmm. You can see that yes. this is much more subtle. Yes. You don't get the same range of colors with um, plant dyes, but they're beautiful colors. And can, can I dye and you, uh, use the same technique if I want to make a... Uh, a piece, of, a piece of wearable art? Oh, yes. Think? Yeah? Oh, yes. Because yeah. the colors are gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, they are. Vicky Bloom is saying that would look great on a wall as artwork. It is gorgeous. Uh, Bonnie Visser is also saying to, uh, totally gorgeous looking. Guess four to six, beautiful and love it. Yes, it's, it's really impressive. Now, Thank so you. I asked you and I, I didn't hear the, the answer. <laughs> How many projects do you, do you tend to work at the same time? Well, um, I'm always dying or printing something, even though I go through stages where I like to do that more than anything else. Uh -huh. um, I'm at the potter's wheel, and what I'm trying to do recently is to um, include thread with the pottery. Oh, nice. So I drill holes uh -huh. in the pots I make and sew thread into them. Oh, it's not an original idea. Lots of people have done things uh -huh. like this. But um, I've been trying to to pull together um, the fabric, the love of fabric and the love of pottery. Uh -huh. And in many ways, clay, working with clay is like working with fabric for the same reason you talked about yes. at the beginning. It's tactile. tactile yes. And one of the things that perhaps characterizes my, uh, my work is c trying to pull together two different worlds. So mm -hmm. I'm pulling together the pottery and the fabric and for many years, I've been f pulling together my activity as an English teacher uh -huh. with my fabric. So I write, right. I tell stories on my fabrics. So this is where I want to go deep, because okay. that's actually what we call the, for this podcast, uh, that you sent the text tiles. Yes. So, so tell me, a, a little, first of all, why you decided to do that. Okay. Um, because I was deeply involved in academics, and I'm a writer, I write personal essays too. And so I wanted my writing, so my, my text, to also work with my fabrics, my textiles. Okay. And so I've made a number of quilts, many quilts, where I'm writing on them. And it's a difficult thing to do because it's hard to get a balance between the visual and the verbal. Mm -hmm. Often, if you put a word onto... Um, a piece of cloth, then the, the immediately the, the, the person looking at it reads the word because First. that's what they read and they don't see the visual too. Mm. So how do you get that balance between visual and verbal, between telling a story visually and telling a story verbally in the same piece? And that's um, an ongoing issue that I still work with. But uh, do, you, do you have... Um not a process, but a, a rule that you follow. Because as you mm -hmm. said, you, it, it's a storytelling, right. but it has to be storytelling at a 360 angle, right. the visual and right. it, it's not different a little bit from the movies, right? We, right. You, you, right. you use image and words. Right. Do you follow any type of rules or it's just I, testing? I don't. I keep experimenting with it and seeing how to get that balance just right. Mm -hmm. So can I show you a couple oh, you of pieces? Please. Okay, so um, this is a quilt that has no words on it, um, but it tells a story. So um, the, the, the piece is called My Mother's Medication, 
my mother um, had, um, had Parkinson's disease and she had a lot of different pills that she had to take and the pharmacist would set them up so that she took them at the right time okay. in the right little pod. And on top of each pod was a little plastic cover. This is it, oh. with a little blue dot on it. Oh. And so she was taking all these different medications that were doing all sorts of different things yes. in her body. And I wanted a quilt that sort of represented all those pills that she's taking. So somebody looking at this would not know that, right. that that's what this right. quilt is about. But for me, that's what this quilt is about. So now I'm going to show you a different quilt where, the, where there are words. So this one, I'm often um, inspired by nature. I think nat the natural world is, um, is, is my, it, it does things perfectly. Uh -huh. And we just copy. Yeah. <laughs> so this is braided um, cotton fabric that I've dyed. And what I've done is taken a quote from um, a, an artist called Beverly Pepper. And she, what she says is, I go to my studio every day. Some days the work comes easily. Um, some days, so other days, nothing happens. Yet on the good days, the inspiration is only an accumulation of all the other unproductive days. <laughs> and I find That's, that inspiring yes. because um, often I go and look, look in my, uh, go to my studio and I think, nah, no, nothing's not, happened, yes, happening yet. Yes, yes, that but, happens to me too. So this is a combination of both my braided fabrics, also wood that I've, beech wood that I've, driftwood that I've picked up on the Oregon coast, and also words. Wow. So I'm pulling everything together there. Mm -hmm. um, another example perhaps would be this one, this one over here. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Sure. Um, about five years ago, I had breast cancer, and um, it's devastating, of course, as, uh, for, uh, as everybody, um, anybody who experiences it. And my way of dealing with it was to do a couple of things. The first thing was to keep a journal. I, as a writer, I found that I was so sick that I wasn't able to write a journal, as I usually do. And so what I did was take... Um, a piece of fabric, eight by eight inches. Whoops. It's okay. That's okay. Eight by eight inches, um, and I wrote the date on it, and then I wrote what happened that day. Oh. And um, I put. I started just doing this, just as a way to sort of document what was happening. Uh -huh. And after a while, I realized I had a lot of these squares, and I started putting them together as a quilt. And mm -hmm. I put f five across, eight down, forty squares to a quilt because um, going through something like breast cancer is like being having 40 days out in the wilderness mm -hmm. and so in the end I made nine of these a whole year's worth wow. day by day uh -huh. and each one is different this is quilt number four and um, it was my 60th birthday and that after, at first I was just putting together quilts that um, were just pe bits and pieces of fabric. And after a while, I would sort of coordinate them. So I would cut out all 40 pieces or, um, over a couple of days. And then I would write on them. Mm -hmm. And I put a book together, mm -hmm. this one, um, Breast C Cancer Quilts, Coping with Breast Cancer Through Quilt Making. And the book um, shows all of these um, quilts. Are they all yours? They're all your Yeah, quilts. all hand dyed. So this would have been um, the first one where I'm putting together a lot of different mm. sort of um, fabrics. By the time I'm moving to this one, you can see that I'm sort of coordinating things a bit better. And by the and here's the one that I've just that we've just looked at. And then by the time I reached the end, I'd run out of um, of fabric, and I was relying on uh, my friend who also hand dyes to provide me with fabric. Mm. So um, that, that's what I call the, the micro quilts. In other words, it was every day. This is what I wrote every day. But I also did macro quilts. So I'm going to show you one of those. And okay. they're also in the book. Let me, let me read a few comments before you <coughs> do so. Uh, now I, I lost here. We, we have one question, uh, more sure. or less related. Do you ever use your fabric <coughs> designs in your pottery? 
Um, yes, there's a lot of overlap, I think. Yeah. So I can use the stencils that I use on my quilts mm. also to stencil on the, on the pottery. Okay. And when it comes to the writing, uh, Karen Max Wheeler is asking, Ken, what, what writing instruments do you use? The computer. The you mean, oh, you mean for, on for fabric? For pieces, okay. Oh, I buy fabric pens. And um, I've experimented with a lot of them. Um, Sharpies actually work very well. Uh -huh. I'm concerned with um, the, the writing lasting and not fading. Yes. So um, a Sharpie will work, and I think the, this one was made with Sharpies. But my favorite is a fabric, are the specifically made fabric pens. And you can get them in different sort of uh, a narrow or, or a wider. And after I've written, I always iron the fabric to heat set. To heat set, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and do you test if they can be washed or not? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and they can, yeah. In the piece that you have, which, by the way, I thought it was beautiful when you came in, uh -huh. but now that I understood that it's actually a journal. Right. It, I, I mean, it takes to a whole different yeah. level. Uh, so what did you use to write with... I used um, probably, a, this is uh, 2012, so it's some time ago, but it looks like a textile pen to me because okay. of the color. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, fab, the textile pens come in different colors. Okay. Sandy Ward is saying that is a beautiful piece. So you were going to talk more oh, about yes. the writing. Okay. So um, I also did a series of um, quilts uh, I'm going to call it the macro experience of, um, of having um, uh, breast cancer, where your whole world feels as if it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a whole other series of quilts. One of them is about um, how it takes a village to cure a sick person. Mm. You know, I'm fairly independent as a person, and um, I discovered, I mean, it's no big surprise, that I needed a lot of people mm. to help me. And so I made a whole quilt about pe the people that helped me. But um, this one uh, was my daily prayer. So it's including writing and, um, and hand-dyed fabrics. Okay. But my, my daily prayer through it. So I'm going to read it to you. Gratefully and expectantly, I ask for one day's portion of grace. Mm. And when you're sick, I mean, I think it's a good prayer for every day. Yes. Um, because we, could, we only know, we only have this day. That's all we know we have. Mm -hmm. and this moment. This moment, exactly. Yes. Not even this day, but yeah. this moment. And especially while I was going through this, there were many times when I would not even want to think about the following week. Mm -hmm. Going through chemo uh, was really tough. So this is a quilt to remind me of, and I've had this prayer for many years, mm -hmm. uh, but it was particularly appropriate when I was time. for that time, mm -hmm. and in this case, what I did was to make um, l these letters with a wood block, uh, a wood block with, and I um, cut out the shape of the letter with sticky foam, the kind of foam you can buy um, at Joanne's. Okay. And you just cut it out and stick it onto the block, and then I print um, the words on here. Uh huh. That. Do you mind saying your your prayer once again? Sure. Gratefully and expectantly, I ask for one day's portion of grace. Mm. That's fantastic. And grace can mean whatever, whatever you mean it is. It. Yeah. yeah, whatever you mean it to mean. Yeah. Sandy Ward is saying this is such a beautiful and inspirational way to convey your journey. It, I, I really think it's fantastic. I mean, going through the process, I can only imagine how hard it is. Unfortunately, I have many friends that went through this we, experience. This, Everybody knows somebody. Somebody, yes. I mean, it's, if it's not you, then it's somebody you know. Yes. Yeah. But I, I think it's a great way. I mean, it's, it's an outlet for everything that you're, that you're feeling. Yes. That yeah. will stay with you, or unfortunately, with your family. Yes. Uh, and they, can, they really can understand on, yes. a, on a different level. And these what quil a person these, is going through. These um, quilts have been displayed. The, the journal quilts were displayed as um, in a gallery at Weber State. Oh, yeah? Um, all of them. Yeah. So it, it, in that kind of situation, then people can go through and read the whole story day by day, mm -hmm. you know, and see what was happening. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for how long were you in treatment? Um, I was diagnosed in December of 2011. 
I had a mastectomy in January of 2012. Okay. I started chemo in February of, of 2012, and I finished chemo um, in June or July of 2012. But I would say it took me another six months before I felt anything like normal. Really? Yeah. Wow. It, 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 chemo knocks... Anybody the, out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you said this is quilt number four? Yes. So how many do you Nine. have? Nine. Nine of them. It's a whole year. I did it for an entire year. Uh -huh. I didn't know I was going to do that, but once I got going, I, I did. And I'm a, I'm a writer. I'm a journal keeper. I've kept journals all mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And so um, this, but this was the only way I could do the journal while I was sick. I just, just to write something on a piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. That was it. And what was the main inspiration for you to get to the book? Um, Again, I'm a writer, yeah. um, and I, I realized after a while that I wanted to, th that the story had a sort of arc to it. Mm. So I'm going to show you what that arc is in here, and I hope it kind of shows. I'm going to stand up to show this. So um, when I began this, um, there's an introduction and so on, um, I had several quilts that I had made before I was diagnosed. And mm -hmm. I didn't have names for them. I didn't know why I had made them. I just had made them. And, um, and this one, compared to this one, I realized that I was making quilts about cell division. So here oh. are cells that are working well and in harmony with each other. Okay, we need, we need a close up on this. So these are the cells that you did actually before. Before I knew, I didn't know why I was making these quilts, but my body already so knew, knew. Uh -huh. that there was, and it was expressing itself through the quilts that I made. Huh. So this one is the, the cells communicating, working well, and using the same color palette of orange and red and green. Then you get this one, mm -hmm. which is really angry. The yes. cells are dividing. They're trying uh -huh. to break out. Uh -huh. And so the first section is all of this book is all about the quilts I made not knowing that I had breast cancer, but my body knew, and my body was expressing itself through these quilts. Mm -hmm. And then the second section, which we've talked about already, is the nine um, journal quilts, and they, there's, there's a detail uh -huh. from each. And then the last section of the book is... Um, all the, the macro quilts. Um, w when I was first diagnosed, I thought I was going to die. I mean, that's yeah, the first thing you think is, yeah. oh, I'm going to die. And so I thought about all the things that I love about life. And I made a quilt about those things mm -hmm. and wrote on the quilt. Why do you refer to them as ma macro quilts? Okay, micro because they're... Um, that's day by day by day. So it's the small picture. Okay. Macro because it's, it's the, the overall, overall picture. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so the macro um, includes, for instance, uh, and here's the quilt I've just shown Grateful, you. Yes. And um, very late in the process, I made a quilt about labeling my fears. And I literally made labels. Wow. And on one side, I wrote what the fear was, and on the other side, like, I'm going to die, and on the other side, I wrote um, an answer to it from the wiser part of myself. And my husband is a fisherman, and so I took his barrel swivels, which mm. is a kind of thing you put on a fishing rod, okay. um, because you could then, I could sew it to the quilt, and then oh, the those, label... Oh, these are those. Yes, and, okay. the, and the, the, you can turn the label over. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then the final quilts in this section is um, I did quotes about um, healing. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was healing, but it was encouraging for me. I couldn't say I'm healing, but it was encouraging for me to read quotes by other people and write those down. And so there's a whole quilt here, which is quotes by other people. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last quilt is... Um, I know that I'll, I'm, I've healed when. Okay. I'm a swimmer, so I've swim three times a week. And when I can get back to swimming, that uh -huh. would be one of them. When I can get back to The work. little things that I can get yes. back into yes. doing. Uh -huh. And one of these quilts, this one, which is about chemo, sort of fire and purification at the same time, 
um, was um, selected um, by um, a, a, a pharmaceutical company, um, and it, the Lilly Company, and they do a Lilly Oncology on Canvas, and it won first prize um, in its section, which was multimedia and overall, and it was published in a book, and they um, gave me $12,000 to spend on some sort of cancer-related um, charity. Okay. Yeah. So I don't own that quilt anymore. Um, it's their quilt. But right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed. Oh. Uh, Linda is saying, I have had breast cancer three times. To journal on fabric would be such a wonderful treasure. Mm -hmm. I wrote in a planner and it was stolen. My heart was broken. What a marvelous way to express your journey. Mm -hmm. Awesome way to preserve your heart's feelings. Awesome. Thank you for that it's, comment. It's yes. really unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <coughs> let me just double check here. Now, uh, guess 277 is saying, I am so impressed. Meter by meter is a square meter. Are you a square artist? Dying versus quilting. Um, read me that comment again, because I'm not quite <laughs> sure what the question is. Okay, let me is. see if I, if I yeah. saw it right. I am so impressed. <coughs> meter, meter versus meter is a square meter. Me, uh, Yes, an area. Yeah. An area, yes. Are you a square artist, dyeing plus quilting? Well, I do dye and I do quilt. Uh -huh. But also one of the things that I think that this, um, this, this oh, guest has, um, has noticed is that I tend to work in squares. Yes. That that's, that's my thing. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, uh -huh. my, my go back position is always the square and then go from there. So yeah, that's very observant. <laughs> When, when you were doing this, so you, you were writing and keeping those squares because yes. you said you didn't, you didn't know you were going to make those squares. No. So you just stacked them? I stacked them, and the first one was all this sort of, just like the cover of this book, was just this mishmash. And then after a while I thought, I might as well just put it together as a quilt, and five by eight, and it was just over a month. And then I thought, well, I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that I was going to make nine of them and then it was going to be an entire year wow. now you said that your latest passion is the the echo dying yes and you show yes. the beautiful do you it's been five or six years yes right do you think now they represent how your body is as well oh that's a very interesting question i've never thought about that um healthy i hope <laughs> <laughs> well they they sure look Peaceful and they, yeah, they, I, I feel they are that happy. way. Yeah, they're happy, they are. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Now, for artists out there, because quilting tends to be such a, uh, a I'm not saying it's only that, but it's what you see squares that make cabins yeah. And, yeah. and so, so traditional. Do you think? In your case, you are a writer, so you are a storyteller teller yeah. by nature. But a lot of people, they have a difficult time expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is the right avenue for them? I think it's an excellent idea for anybody, and I think you've had those, some of those comments have suggested this. Um, to start with, say, you're going to make, I'm going to explain my process of making this, and this might work for other people, that I decided I would make eight by eight square inch Squares. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, that was going to be my, my size. And I took scraps of fabric, and you can sort of see it in here. I would take scraps of fabric, sew them together, iron them so they were flat, and then I would cut that. I would find a place where I thought it looked good, and then I'd cut eight by eight. Eight, okay. And um, it was fun to use scrap, up my scraps. Um, and it was fun. I mean, everybody has, any quilter has a stash and has scraps. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just to write the day's date and write something that happened on that date. Yeah. And then put them together. Mm -hmm. They could be, uh, it would make more sense in some ways to do it as month by month might be a good way to do it. Right. Or even to stack them up in a book, make a book of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's so great. I, yeah. I don't even know what to say. Because well, I think it's a fantastic idea for people to... Well, and I think people are intimidated by writing. Oh, I can't write. Yes. Um, but what you can write is one comment about mm -hmm. what happened today. So um, if it's all right with you, I'll read you a few of these oh, yes, comments. Oh, yes, please. Um, and you'll see how easy it is. 
So, um, so this is 41212. Back for rehydration. While, while I was going through chemo, and your guests may have discovered this too, that it's very hard to stay hydrated. Okay. And so the effects of chemo are even worse if you get dehydrated. And so I would go back and have a drip and have rehydration okay. um, after the, after the uh, chemo. I can feel that this is the end of this cycle. I'm tired but not ill. Rain all day. The garden loves it. We're all being rehydrated. Yeah. So um, another one, this is a bad day. Kim gives me acupuncture at home. Um, I do, did acupuncture through the process. Okay. And it prevented me from getting neuropathy. And I highly recommend mm. a big, uh, um, doing acupuncture, mostly because it just, the chemo stops everything up in your body. And acupuncture keeps everything keeps flowing. flowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've written in here, aches. Um, the gutted feeling, that, I don't know if that's an English expression, to mm. say you feel gutted, mm. like, you know, from your gut. Um, I spend most of the day in bed. That's all I could that's write. All. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter what the day, you can always write something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I'm sure it was a, a cathartic thing for you to be writing very. all the yeah. time. Yes. And and to be working with textiles, going back to your very original, the very first story you mm -hmm. told, which is it's that tactile thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. It is important. But I, I would say also to the family. Yeah. Um, I lost a, a very good friend at the beginning of the year to breast cancer, and she left some very young kids. Yeah. Uh, if she knew about this, and yeah. she, during the process she had created, what a legacy that would be, be for, for the, the kids, kids. Yeah. to understand what yeah. she was really going through. Yeah. Because I think when you're in the process of being sick, uh, the whole family is trying to, to cope, and, and they, mm -hmm. they get lost too. They yes, have all they the do. fears yeah. as well of not knowing tomorrow what's yes. going to happen. Yes. Uh, so I think you, you really don't see everything that the person no. is going through. You're, you're just in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. So I. Uh, um, made a quilt about exactly that. So can I show it to you and read Please. it read it to you? It was by the end of the, the treatment that you made that or no it was fairly early on and okay. it was one again that I wrote on. Oh here it is. So this this is the quilt. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to read, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it to okay. you. And it says, um, because people would say to me, um, you're so brave, I don't know how you do it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, most of the time, you have no choice, you know, and you feel broken and fragile. So I wrote, this is a quote from Anna Quinlan, and it says, we are amazed not by our own strength, but by that ability to slog through the storm that looks like strength from the outside and just feels like every day when it's happening to us. Hmm. So that's, that's how it felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. And the book um, is, is available on Amazon. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I guess you guys mm -hmm. get, it's called Breast Cancer Quilts, Coping with Breast Cancer Through Quilt Making. So your, your talent, the art, artist inside you, helped you go through this journey yes. in, a, in yeah. a different way. Yes, and my, um, a number of my doctors told me that um, it would help with my healing if I was doing something creative. Look at that. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Well, yeah. I, I think it is because mm -hmm. well, I believe we are energy and our brain is extremely powerful yeah. in the process. Yeah if the brain believes this, this, the right things. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. we allow fear to take charge of our brain, right. and we create other stories. Right. right. And whatever the brain thinks is real, that's what's going to happen. That's yeah. how I see it. Yes. So yes. when we are creating during a difficult process, we are actually uh, giving alternatives to the brain, right. not only to find answers, uh, right. but to, to rest. Right. Right. And help us go through whatever part right. of our journey we are going through. And I, I would also add to that um, that for me, um, w when you're going through a difficult experience, there's a lot of fear um, and a lot of looking at the future. Will I still be here? What's it going to be like next yes. week? 
And doing something creative brings you back to the present mm -hmm. so that you are just here now doing this, which is the way all of us should be living yes. anyway, yes. Uh, because that's all we have. We've talked about that. Um, but doing that one square and writing on it centered me here. here. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and also, like you said, the bad day. So you wrote it, and inside your, your mind was going, okay, I had a bad day. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And allows you to move and not move be on. stuck yeah. into that. Right. Right. Now, the phase is over. Yes. What, what's for you now as an artist? Well, um, I think I told you that I retired two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I actually call it graduation. I graduated, <laughs> especially as I was an academic and I was in school. Uh -huh. So I've graduated. And um, I, one, my focus for that graduation was to become much more, to be focused much more on art. Okay. And that's what I've been doing. So all the re more recent stuff that you've seen, the eco dyeing and the printing, is a result of that mm -hmm. being more involved and moving forward. I, I think, and um, I'll be interested to hear what you think, that um, for me, the word retirement suggests that you've stopped, that you're not, you're not moving forward. And for me, the very mm -hmm. essence of, of life is learning. You know, yes, if I'm learning yes. something, then I'm alive. I like that too. And uh, so that's why it's graduation, so that I can move on and keep learning. And now keep, after the PhD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the PhD isn't the end, it's the beginning. The beginning, yes. Yes, and yes. so I reached not the end of my career, but the beginning of a new one. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunately, I don't have to make money at it. I've, I've got a retirement fund, but I, I'm, I take pottery classes. Uh -huh. um, I take uh, textile classes and I make um, quilts. I dye fabric. I make pottery. Um, I make cards from the leftover pieces of paper that aren't good enough to make into a, 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 a whole piece. So, so, so before we end, let's talk a little bit yeah. about the paper part then. Okay. It's, it's fiber as well. So it's, yeah. it's really still your sure. environment. Yeah. Uh, mostly, what do you make with them? So you, you print the paper? Yes. You like more wall pieces, cards? Do you send you know, cards? I'm, I do send cards. I, uh, it's one of my favorite um, Christmas gifts each year is to give people a packet of handmade cards oh, nice. and it's different each year as to what uh -huh. it is. So, um, and these I haven't quite des decided what to do with, but a friend and I are going to have got a booth um, at the Eccles, um, in Ogd Eccles, 125th anniversary, the Eccles Art Center uh -huh. in August. And she will be selling scarves that she's eco dyed with, with the leaves and I'm selling these prints. Oh, nice. So, I, we'll see. I'm, again, I'm always in process. I'm never quite sure uh -huh. where it's going. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm usually fine with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not looking for the final answer of anything. Well, we know. I don't what, know if you are, but no. Well, we know what the final answer is. <laughs> it's death. You yeah. Know? So that's not fun. So no, that's no. postponed. <laughs> so it's okay. I mean, when I put the binding on something and put uh -huh. a label on the on the back, and it's very important always to label our quilts and to say. Give the, let the quilt a uh, uh, title, put your name and the date on it. Can you show us one? Yes, because actually yes. you talked about that in yes. the meeting we were together, right? Yes. Uh, so how important that is. Why is that so important? Because, and this comes from my academic work. Okay. So um, many quilts made, especially in the 19th century, um, have no identifying feature on them. You don't know who made them or where they were made or... Um, for what purpose they were made. And I belong to an organization called the American Quilt Study Group, AQSG, which does historical research on old quilts. And that's not really my thing, mm -hmm. but what I came to realize was that life would be a lot easier for the people that come after us if we as women labeled our works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's a particularly female thing. Oh. I don't need to put my name on this quilt. I'm not worthy of that. I'm not important enough. Yeah. I'm not important enough. Uh -huh. And um, I'm saying, yes, you are. And so um, if I were to be really good about this, uh -huh. I would put where I made it and why I made it. But that's all, that's oh, all in, in the, the book. book so well. it, that's okay. You know, I, I don't think it happens only to women, though. We, no? we had a, a Gord artist about a week or so here yeah. at Curious Mondo, and he didn't sign his pieces either. And somebody in the audience, and... and 
Here's where you see how the audience is really important yes. to everything yes. we do. Uh, a, a lady mentioned that. But yes. Ken, you're not going to be here forever. Right. And people need to know that you yes. have created this That's pieces, exactly right. Right? Yes. And, and when it comes to saying, oh, you know, I'm not important enough or... Um, just this week here in South Lake, there was a huge concert uh, to create awareness about the amazing rate of suicide we oh, have yeah. among yeah. young, young yeah. kids that are, yeah. that are uh, gay. And one of the things that they mentioned through the whole thing was you matter. Yes. You are important. Yes. And yes. unfortunately, sometimes we are so retrieved wherever we are, yes. inside our studio, on the screen of the phone, whatever yes. we live most of the time, that we really forget that we right. matter, right? I and this so. is the beginning of, of owning that. It is. And I, I think another part of that is that we tend to, the person who's going to be the most critical about her own work is me. Mm -hmm. I'm going True. to be really critical about my work. So it's very nice that your guests, your audience, um, is saying such kind things about it. And I look at it and say, well, yeah, it's okay. You know, <laughs> but I should always, and I encourage all the people who are watching this to label what they make. Mm -hmm. And you just put another piece of fabric written with yes, a fabric pen. Yes, and it's just got underwonder on it, and I iron it on. Mm -hmm. And if I were really diligent about it, I would sew this on as well. Around. Okay, yeah. so it stays mm -hmm. there long. Yeah. And it's, I, I, it's the last thing I do. It's like, oh, bother. But I still have to do it. So it's not fun. You know, it's but not But it, it needs, it needs to be there. Now, yeah. when you're preparing a piece for a <coughs> show, for a show, is there anything else you need mm -hmm. to do? Yes. You have to put a, um, a, a sleeve on the back. So um, the back of this, this is actually commercial fabric. Okay. But the sleeve is just leftover old um, fabric that, that I've, that I've ha have. And you make a sleeve and then put a, um, a, a runner through it mm -hmm. so it can be hung up. You never want to put pins through the fabric. Okay. Okay. So you want something that sticks out that then can be, you can have nails on the wall and it can just hook onto those. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sandy's saying, I love that you continue your education in textiles. What is your process when you feel stuck and need motivation? That's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think there are, there are three things that I would mention. One is keeping the journal. Um, a journal often prompts me to think about things and prompts ideas. A second is to travel. Mm -hmm. I think traveling puts us in, uh, takes us out of our everyday. Yes. And even if it's only traveling to the next town, mm -hmm. uh, going somewhere that's slightly unfamiliar, going to a restaurant that you haven't been to before, mm -hmm. and you see something up on the wall and you think, oh, that's interesting. And, um, of course, always carrying your phone so that you take pictures of whatever it is. Um, and the third thing that's always been very important to me is going to art museums and galleries. Because people, the best art uh, um, and work is in museums and galleries. Mm -hmm. And you see other people's work. And even if it's like the farmer's market that you go to where you see other people's work, um, that's always inspiring to me. And I get lots of ideas mm -hmm. from looking at other people's mm -hmm. work. Yeah, and I would add to that, join a group that's doing something similar to you for mm -hmm. the same reason mm -hmm. that they're doing something interesting and you look at it. It's like I work in a, in a studio, a potter's studio with other potters, all doing different things. Yeah. But I get a lot of inspiration and ideas from seeing what they're doing. Oh, I like that. I think I'll try that. How did you do that? Yeah. You never feel guilty because I have to tell you, I love mm. sculpting. Yeah. It's one of my biggest passions, but I'm crazy about fiber. Yeah. So I do a lot of needle felting. I always feel guilty when I move from one, one to, to the, the other. other. Yes, and I, I, do. I keep thinking, I don't know where my voice is, but they ha they're both tactile, but they, they, haven't, they, they tell different stories. They do. Right? They do. And I think, in a way, um, I would say that all that, everything that I do is in some way autobiographical. Mm -hmm. telling my story in one way or another. And I would suggest to you that that's a good starting point for any artist, that every artist, even if it doesn't, like my PhD dissertation, you think that has nothing to do with my life. It was, my, it, it was a form of my autobiography. So whatever we do creatively is a form of autobiography, if only, if for the only reason is because it comes from us. Yes. And so... That's very interesting to look at and say, what am I drawn to? 
natural things perhaps or particular shapes or particular colors why is that mm -hmm. you know the sea maybe if that's our environment or the mountains or food or whatever it is that mm -hmm. we're drawn to that's us i like that mm -hmm. so whatever i create today i can say this is my story today yeah and yeah. this is how it presented yeah so it yeah. doesn't matter the media i'm using no that's i don't think so you're yeah. so wise Jim. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> One last thing before yeah. we end. I want to go touch a little bit about the j journaling part. Sure. Because we, you know, we are always studying the market for what we do here. Right. And we saw that that went away for a while. And it looks like there is kind of a revival of that, mm -hmm. the new formats of journaling. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember myself when I was younger, mm -hmm. I had tons. Mm -hmm. But for me, it came a point that I said, this is for children, not for me anymore. Oh, yeah. I never did that yeah. again. Tell me, tell me for you, what's behind the journaling, besides living mm -hmm. your story? Um, I think it is li living my story. Um, I think it goes back to a number of things that we've talked about already. Mm -hmm. um, primarily that um, I'm the only person that's me. There's nobody else that's me. And even though my life is short in comparatively, um, my journal is a way to document and express who I am and to say I matter. And uh, my journals are all lined up. Um, I'm on um, journal number 83. <laughs> They've changed over the decades as uh -huh. to how I do them. I used to handwrite them and now I generate them um, at the computer print them out and get them bound at Kinko's. Oh, you do, you do mm -hmm. buy them, yeah. okay. Oh, yes. Yes. And um, when I die, those journals are left to Weber State University, to their archives, hmm. because it's not like they should be thrown out. I still matter, yes. even after I die. Uh -huh. So that's a way for then, I, then after I've died, I don't care who reads them. Right now, I'd rather people not didn't read them, yes. but who cares after I've died, you know? So <laughs> You want to be mad, be mad. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's okay. So then they will be, at least they will be archived somewhere and kept. Mm -hmm. And that's I've left so them, I've left Weber State money on the condition that they house my journals. Wow. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. It was an amazing message. Thank you, Shahar. I've loved being here, and you asked wonderful questions, and I really enjoyed and appreciated the comments from your guests. Yes, they, they are amazing, too. Yeah. Uh, Debbie Sig is saying, Judy oh, is inspiration. Oh, Debbie. I know Debbie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's a wonderful silk um, painting artist. Yes, true, yeah. true. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. here. And you guys, thank you so much. You thought you were going only to see about quilting, but I think you learned a lot about storytelling, yeah, uh, and most of all, that you matter as a person, yes. and you should tell your story every single day with whatever media makes you comfortable and yeah. happy, right? Yeah. But don't, never, never undermine yourself and, and think you don't matter or your creations don't matter. Yeah. Uh, do that a little bit every day. Thank you again for all your participation. Don't forget, uh, Sandy Ward is saying thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. So thank you, uh, Debbie, Sandy, Linda, and everybody out there for being here and participating. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see you back here next Tuesday at the same time, same place. Thank you so much.